Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, we shall be talking about abdominal trauma. Now, we are not worried about how do you get an abdominal trauma. You can get it someone punching on your abdomen or you get a baseball bat hitting onto your abdomen or you may fall into something. So, it can be a blunt trauma and it can also be a penetrating trauma. That means penetration means something is piercing you. Something is piercing you. That is known as penet penetrating trauma. And blunt trauma means there is no break. Generally, there will be no break in the skin. But yes, it can be. But examples of blunt trauma are getting a hit by a baseball bat or somebody hitting with you with a punch or um, anything that is blunt in nature. Whereas in uh, the perforating trauma, that thing will uh, involve you using a pen or using a... Uh, a screwdriver or using a knife or using a spear anything anything that penetrates your abdomen that is known as abdominal trauma now you know much about this uh, what is abdominal trauma so we are what what we are worried about is this how do you know this is a very dangerous trauma that can occur to you what are the danger signs first thing first any type of trauma you should always get it checked you might think that okay just a normal trauma i don't have so much injuries let me go and just sit and relax and just go and sleep and you don't wake up from sleep right that can occur that can occur mostly occur if you're having a head trauma you say no i'm not having a headache now i'll go and sleep and later at, uh, you sleep the whole night and morning you don't wake up and you're dead so that things occur so you should never take any trauma to any part of your body uh, lightly so everything you should take as a serious one so still i'll give you some symptoms and the watch out sign that you should know that you're having an abdominal trauma so what are the things that you should watch out now first thing first you will be having a history of trauma obviously it's very very um, uh, simple thing but it, it is very important you will be having a history of trauma i'm just sitting in the bed i'm lying in the bed and then i wake up and i imagine i might be having bleeding inside my stomach very very less chance unless i have something other diseases like peptic ulcer right i'm having an ulcer in my stomach that is different but if i get if somebody punches me in my stomach it will be a history of trauma so you'll be having a history of trauma or you might be having history of road traffic accident or you might have a history of falling from a bike or something coming and crashing to you this is very important second thing once you see your abdomen so you lift your t-shirt and just see you might be able to see some sort of bleeding or superficial bleeding that is your skin might be bruised your skin might be having abrasion that means imagine your skin is getting rubbed into a very rough surface that is known as abrasion and then there can be hematoma formation less chance but there can be hematoma formation the skin may be red the skin may be torn there can be a rupture that is also very very important the third thing that you have to watch out here is that you'll be having pain in the abdomen you'll be having pain right the fourth thing is that once you press over the pain area wherever there is pain once you press slowly super, so very slowly press on the pain area and then you remove your hand again you get that pain so imagine this is my abdomen i'm pressing here yes i'm getting my pain once i remove my hand again i get a pain that is known as rebound tenderness that is also very very important along with this if the person is lying with his back on these uh, in the bed you will see the flanks what are these flanks in very common words we tell it uh, we can uh, we refer that as love handles if you see that that will be kind of full this means there is fluid most likely this fluid can be your blood which is getting accumulated in your abdomen i'm saying an abdomen not just stomach okay you are having abdomen inside that you're having a peritoneal layer just remember there's a layer inside inside that you're having stomach and all the organs so you might be bleeding outside the stomach but inside the abdominal cavity so all the blood that is getting accumulated will be accumulated in the uh, uh, the gravity dominant area that is your flank if you're lying with your spine on the uh, in the surface of the mattress right this is very important along with this you will be having features of shock because you're bleeding if you're bleeding there is less amount of blood in the uh, in your entire body in your main circulatory system so there will be no tissue perfusion right so you will be having features of shock now how do you know that you're having features of shock first thing first you will be in altered sensor and altered sensorium this means you won't be able to say is it day or a night or what is the approximate time now or you might not be able to say where are you are you in the hospital are you in your friend's house are you in your um, in your hospital or in your office you might not be able to say it basic uh, understanding if i ask you what is 7 plus 6 you might not be able to say it. this is known as 
altered sensorium he will be speaking something nonsense that is uh, does not make sense he will mu make some sentences that does not make any sense that is he'll or he might be speaking something that you can't understand anything he will be murmuring something but you cannot understand what what he is speaking that word you might not hear that word ever in your life so that is also a feature feature of altered sensorium now along with this you if you see the person he will be passing urine to a less extent right he will be passing urine to a less extent yes you know that the person is in shock along with this the blood pressure the blood pressure will drop but the pulse rate will go up it will be weak but the pulse rate will go up right along with this if you see the extremities the extremities means the extreme part of your body that is your hand that is your feet if you touch this area it will be not warm if you touch this area right if you go and touch a dead person and my hand if i'm alive now you will be able to see my hands are quite warm but whereas if you go and touch a person who is um, in shock his hands will be cold and there will be the the natural contour of the skin that is a kind of you have a vibrant color of your skin right if you go to a very very cold place very very cold place and you are getting all this cold um, wind hitting at your face you can see your uh, the face turns whitish right that is the color is lost that you can see in person who are having shock along with this if you see for this capillary refill time this is known as capillary refill time if you press to the nail bed you can see it is becoming red once i remove the pressure it immediately fills up this will be increased it will be like 3 seconds 4 seconds or more than 4 seconds generally it should fill in very f like it's, it should be uh, filled in instant like 1 2 seconds right so if you s see for the pulse if you see for the pulse you will be able to hear the pulse the pulse will be increased but will be very weak what do i mean by weak is the volume of the pulse will go down now what is the meaning of volume of pulse if i am pressing my hand here I'm trying to feel my radial pulse here. Now, if you put your finger very slow, uh, I mean in a slow fashion, not applying a lot of pressure, you could feel the pulse. It is something is hitting onto your fingertips, right? Something is hitting onto your fingertips. That is known as the volume. How much it is hitting to your fingers, that upward vibration, that is known as the volume. That will be reduced, but the pulse rate will be increased, right? It is a compensatory mechanism because your body is having less amount of blood right so less amount of blood means to all the parts of your body the nutrition cannot go the oxygen cannot go so you're having a less amount of blood so the, our body will try to compensate it by moving the blood much more faster in order to whatever less amount of blood is present let me send it very very fast to every other organs right how it increase by increasing the blood pressure remember whenever you're having shock initially your body will compensate by increasing the blood pressure later on the blood pressure will be reducing right because whenever you are in shock your body releases some hormones that is like the body is in uh, stress those hormones are known as noradrenaline adrenaline these are mostly released from your kidneys not exactly from your kidneys in kidneys this um, uh, it's something known as suprarenal gland okay also known as adrenal gland these are responsible hormones that prepares your body to fight or flight that means if you're having a very risky scenario you're having a very risky situation your body will prepare either to fight with it or either to run out of it right this will increase your breath rate right it will increase your blood pressure your pupils will dilate you will become more alert these are the things that uh, this hormone does right so these are the symptoms of shock that you can see a person who's having abdominal trauma again i'll summarize very very quick so what you'll have you'll be having history of trauma along with this you the the, the you will be complaining or the patient might be complaining he's having pain now once you press on the abdomen and then you remove your hand there will be a rebound tenderness you press this pain once you remove your hand again there will be pain that is known as rebound tenderness along with if you see the skin of the stomach of the abdomen right you will be able to see abrasion you will be able to see marks of something friction burn right you'll be able to see that if the patient is uh, lying down in the bed you will be able to see the flanks that is the love handles of the abdomen of the stomach and side uh, side part of your abdomen will be like uh, full it will be like full right along with this 
if there's huge amount of blood huge huge amount of blood right around 1.5 liters of blood or 1 liters of blood which is very unlikely the patient will be already going in shock if that much amount of blood but obviously it depends on patient to patient because sometimes uh, it depends on the health of the patient if the person is very healthy he might lose that much amount of blood he might not understand just will i'll give an example of postpartum hemorrhage that is once the mother delivers the baby sometimes if you lose around 300 400 500 ml of blood nothing happens even 700 ml nothing will happen to the patient but if that uh, there's a very weak kind of lady malnutrition that means she is not eating properly she is from low economic status and if she is losing even 300 400 ml of blood she can go in shock so the amount of blood loss is not always directly proportional to the outcome right it's not always directly proportional it depends on your age if your age is young what do i mean by young means our age group like 18 19 20 25 30 years this is a very strong age group i'm not saying young like five six years those are also susceptible the age is very important and then your physical fitness is very very important are you having any sort of comorbidities like you have diabetes you have hypertension or any chronic disease any chronic disease slowly slowly your immune system has been damaged so this will impact overall how your body responds to blood loss right so these are the things that you have to keep in mind so again abdominal trauma it is very common mostly organs which are damaged are your, are your liver or your pancreas right these are the organs generally which have been damaged or sometimes if you get an abdominal trauma you might vomit out blood because that uh, injury has done injury to your stomach and there's bleeding inside your stomach then you're bleeding or uh, vomiting out that is containing blood that can also occur if you're having peptic ulcer disease that means ulcer in the stomach you can vomit out blood right you can vomit out blood along with that so these are the things that you should watch out in abdominal trauma these are the red flags and the pain is increasing and you think that it's a very good impact that uh, it literally shocked you you should go and get it checked and where you should go you should go to the emergency room first thing first they'll make sure all your vitals are working perfectly fine in hospital what they'll do they'll see that you are not shocked right they'll check your blood pressure they might even start a iv line in order to take out blood for let's say you need blood transfusion later or to inject normal saline or any volume expanders any fluids to increase your volume that it's a um, it's a very it's a general procedure that has been done for any trauma right along with this they'll check out your vitals they'll check your gcs that is known as glasgow coma scale it means in very simple words how well is your body functioning how well is your brain functioning that means it involves like if i tell you to speak you can speak very proper speaking right you're able to speak properly second thing is here is that are you opening your eyes or not if i say hey man just open your eyes are you opening your eyes or not and the third thing is that any response to stimulate it means i tell you i uh, i tap on your hand and you just say i can feel this these are the things that they see in gcs right this is very very important they'll do and they'll do your vital monitor your blood pressure your urine output your respiratory rate your pulse rate your pulse pressure your chest auscultation then also they'll see for there's any massive bleeding going inside your stomach they might do an endoscopy they'll put a tube inside your mouth and uh, inside your mouth to your esophagus that is your food pipe and see stomach is there any bleeding or they can sometimes do a sonography that is known as fast scan they'll see for that there's any bleeding in the abdominal cavity right along with this sometimes they might even do a um, proctoscope they might see this is there any bleeding or because sometimes what happens is that in guys you might be having a trauma and that can be bleeding can be there from the perineum uh, what i mean by perineum in the guys what i mean is the prostate right um not perineum prostate there may be bleeding because you might not see the patient is lying in front of you chest up back is down you might not be able uh, might not be able to focus there why to see that but you might miss it so those are the things that uh, i wanted to share with you and that's all for now and if you have something more i'll upload it in the next video and i would like to see for your suggestion thank you